Okay, North Langley Community Church, uh, Sound Techs at Walnut Grove. Um, this is a video to go over DCA spills, which was a great option before, but um, I think right now it's going to be needed, especially as we've um, split the tracks up to be three different faders, three different families of background tracks. Um, spilling DCAs is going to be the easiest way to get the right channels um, under your fingers all the time. So let me just review that. So what we have by default on the A layer across is definitely all the drum channels. And then we've been filling up the rest with instruments, but we don't really need to. This could stop at drums if we wanted, and we could put all the instruments on the B layer. That's fine. The other thing we have set up by default is in the middle, we have our vocals going. From last Sunday, there was only two, and I put this Trax DCA right under my fingers, just ready to go. You can drag and drop DCAs just like you can input channels. So this gave me control to change the level of all the tracks together right here next to the vocals. Um, I've got my click that is totally visual. It's just showing me to help me um, tap in delay tempo if I want to, but it doesn't need to be here either. And then I've consolidated some of these effects things. I did this last Sunday. Um, I made a new DCA that's just vocal effects. So to change membership for um, any DCA, this, this should be a reminder for all of you, um, any DCA, you select it, at least this is the way I prefer to do it, select it and then go to routing. So selecting and routing gives you access to every input effects return. So there's these tabs along the top that have categories, and then you just light up what you need. So on effects return, this um, vocal effect bus, uh, sorry, this vocal effect DCA has my main vocal plate reverb, this other one I've been working with, that's um, an EMT. I also have the vocal delay on it and the um, ADT doubler that I wasn't even using this past week, but so only effects that apply to vocals are on this DCA, which is great because you can dry up vocals very easily by just pulling down the fader. If you're into a more intimate part of the song and you want the vocals drier, um, you can also mute only vocal effects in between songs without accidentally instantly drying up a guitar or, um, or the drum mix or anything else. So I have an effects DCA that's all the effects in the world right now, and then a Vox effects DCA that is just vocal effects. So that's a handy thing to have quick access to because you need to be in and out of effects all the time. And then on the third layer, as always, we have our wireless and then our four gas pedals. We're running all of these at the same time in our current streaming environment. We've got that speech boost group. We've got the room mics that are very important. Uh, we've got our main recording matrix, and this is what we have soloed for us to be listening to on headphones and to be looking at the level on the meter, making sure it's driving up into the yellow all the time. And then our house level, which is independent of that. So um, at a spoken beginning of a service, when it's a quieter spoken prayer by the worship leader, I probably have to crank the recording matrix. I probably need to boost um, his vocal input more than usual. And I compensate for that by pulling down the house. Because right now we have no congregation. I'm sure that's going to change very soon for sure. But right now we can really bring down um, house level for the sake of getting a lot of unaffected vocal during prayers and intros and stuff like that. And then as soon as we're into the song, house goes back up to make sure we're driving lots of great sound at the room mic. Room mic comes up to zero or near zero. We use a lot of room mic to really blend that in. Um, and then I keep an eye on the record level, which usually should live around unity, I think, um, and be right into the yellow where we want to see it. Anyway, back to DCAs. Over here, there is a label that says DCA spill. So this option can get turned on and off. Um, we want to make sure it's on. We turn on DCA spills. And then what happens is on the third layer, where I've got all these DCAs all living here, all I have to do is hit the mix button. And then everything else in the board gets replaced with only the members of this DCA. So I can be mixing from DCAs. Um, and if I want to make any change within the drums, 
it's just show me drums. A change in bass, a change in guitars, and just the guitars come up, just the keys come up, just the instruments um, come up that we weren't using this past week. These are things that are not guitars or keys, obviously. We've got tracks, we've got vocals, um, and then we've got the two effects DCAs, effects and vocal effects. Um, one thing worth noting is that when things spill out, they spill in the input channel order. So if you have put your vocals in a really weird order, um, they will be rearranged to what their inputs are. So when I go to um, channel number, I see this is 25 and 26. They're always in order. So even if on my center B layer, I had these switched because I wanted the leader first, that's all well and good. But as soon as you're spilling DCAs, you see things come up in number order that are on the group. So that's just something to be aware of when you build your vocal channels, is you can't just swap the order around in a DCA spill like you can on the rest of the surface. So this gives me access to all the different families of instruments um, just by hitting mix. And then as soon as I release all the DCA mix buttons and I'm unspilled, I've got my vocals where I want them, I've got my, um, vocal effect DCA, which you can treat as a vocal effects master pretty much. I've got my delay return that I'm riding all the time. It's out all the way until I tap tempo. Um, it's in the background for some sections. If I'm pushing a delay for a little bit, I will ride this and just let a long note um, cycle a bit with repeats. Um, it just, that just adds fullness to a long note. Um, by having it repeat and not be perceived as repeating, but just sound kind of thicker and extended. Um, sometimes we can do some phrase repeating, but um, I think people's ears are pretty attuned to that. And if you hear lyric repeating, or you're hearing S's and other consonants repeat in time after a lyric, that gets really distracting really quickly. So that's why I have this under my fingers as much as possible because um, it can't be static like your reverbs often can. Delay kind of stands alone like that. Um, so yeah, that's how we use DCA spills to give us access to um, different families of sounds. The other thing that's super useful about having them up on your left side all the time is that you can mute the band very quickly while you're dialing in um, your pastor mic level on the right bank. So um, the DCAs are applying only to band things. So I can mute out the band and be dialing in um, either a video on the iMac channel on the right, or um, like I said, the pastor or someone hosting on a handheld. Um, none of those are on DCAs right now. So you can't accidentally mute a playback or a wireless mic because I've kept them out of those families right now. So that's how I would love um, everyone to start using this, especially because of the tracks. I can quickly hit tracks and see my three different track families here. And you might start making notes about starting the guitar low on a certain song. Um, you might start making notes about, um, yeah, writing the percussion level or the pad level for different songs. Um, and during rehearsal, um, Corey can assign different elements of the background tracks into these three. So you can tailor this song by song. Um, eventually it would be great to have different scenes that you're going to per song, but even without doing that, just making notes about, okay, I want to start percussion on minus 10 on this song because it's kind of hot, but later on in the song, I kind of want it at full. So I need to be aware of where to start it and where to finish it later on. So that just adds a whole bunch of mixing potential, EQing potential, compression potential, um, lots of different things we can do with the tracks and help them integrate in with the band more. That's my real end goal with tracks is I want it to feel like it's always part of the band. So um, if you have an acoustic guitar that's not being played on stage but is in tracks, I want to make sure that isn't sticking out like a sore thumb, especially when visibly there's no acoustic guitar player on stage. Um, it can just be a layer that's more percussive. Um, yeah, just kind of, you know, chiming through and has that, that, that nice crisp attack and rhythmic nature, but doesn't sound like it's a full-on 
band member in front of us because the cameras will show who's in front of us and what they are doing. So it helps um, just the whole um, pre-recorded part um, integrate better with the live musicians on stage. So yeah, that's DCA spills. Um, yeah, would love to work with all of you more um, to make these help your workflow as a mixer with a full band.